dozen highly rated price competitive companies. Well, that's exactly what happens when you call Select Quote Life. For example, George is 40. He was getting sky high quotes from other companies because he takes meds to control his blood pressure. But when I shopped around, I found him a 10 year, $500,000 policy for under $25 a month. I'm Select Quote Agent Dan Sabino. And believe me, if Select Quote isn't shopping for your life insurance, you're probably paying too much. For your free quote, call 800 519 0447. That's 800 519 0447. 800 519 0447. Or go to selectquote.com. Since 1985, we shop, you save. Get full details on the example policy at selectquote.com slash commercial for price to vary depending on your health issue and company and other factors. Not available in all states. <laughs> And welcome back, George Zoli with you, Paul the Bully with us. Paul, the 60s were a very tumultuous set of years. I mean, it was, geez, I, I remember growing up in it. We had the Vietnam protests, the Vietnam War, it, the assassinations of JFK, Robert F. Kennedy, Martin Luther King, Jr. It was a horrible time. It was. It was. I mean, it was a, it was a kind of a time of, of severe introspection in, 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 in American society. Uh, and and they and they became a renewed movement to, to fix what was wrong. Uh, but I mean, you know, again, three political three high profile political assassinations within an eight year within a five year period is is, is truly amazing in the United States. And, and yet, this country kept moving forward. And I think that's you know that's part of the beauty of America. Uh, I think we see the um, we see a certain degree of introspection. We see okay, you know, yeah. We, we're the best game in town, but we're certainly not perfect, and they, and they kind of focus on that. I mean, you know, we, we all understand the horror of the of internment of Japanese Americans, um, you, know, you know, after Pearl Harbor. And then there was some movement after September 11th, and, and, and the 20th anniversary is coming up, you know, in, in, in two weeks, to, you know, to have a similar type of situation with Muslim Americans as well. And a lot of people said, well, you know, including George W. Bush said, well, slow down, we, you know, we did that in the past. It wasn't a good idea then, it's not a good idea now. So we have this desire to not make the same mistake twice, and I think that stands us well. Absolutely. What are your thoughts on the JFK assassination? You know, I've, uh, I've been weeding through the, uh, the last couple of document dumps, and, and every now and then some little, little kernel pops up. And I was, a couple of days ago, I was actually just kind of bopping through some documents, and I found that um, Oswald, when he was a Marine, was recovering from a gunshot wound in 1956. Now, Oswald never saw our action. Uh, and there's always been this, this crazy um, theory that Oswald really was uh, excuse me, an intelligence operative. Um, yet, Oswald was wounded and spent a couple of weeks in the hospital in 1957, and there's no explanation as to what the cause of the wound was. Huh. Was it a self-inflicted wound? Was he, you know, was he the victim of a crime? And, and I haven't been able to find any other information, you know, on that at all. Um, and one of the other things that I, that, that, you know, is kind of kicking around, you know, you know, every so often, is that James Hoover was close to mandatory retirement age, and shortly after the assassination, uh, Lyndon Johnson issued an executive order exempting Hoover from that seven-year-old retirement age. Yeah, Hoover did not want to leave. No, he was he was firmly entrenched. He had been heading that agency for you know through I mean I don't know how many through ten presidents for crying out loud. He he did not want to leave, and there had to be something that would that would make Johnson grant that because. I don't think Johnson cared for Hoover. I don't think Hoover cared for Johnson. Um, yet we know that the Johnson administration made great use of the FBI uh, in, uh, in gathering information and intelligence about their political enemies. Uh, and, uh, you know, again, was there a, a wide range of government conspiracy? Not so sure of that, uh, but there are a lot of players who keep popping up. Um, you know, in a very tang tangential way. Uh, you know, one of the one of the one of the things that's popping up is is uh, is General Cavell, who um, and, and, 
30 minutes left, you, you're going to enjoy this. Uh, you know, General Cabell was the deputy director of operations of the CIA, and he was, he was, he was, he was either fired or forced to resign shortly after the, the Bay of Pigs invasion. Uh, yet, General Cabell was one of the founders of Air Force's Project Blue Book. And every now and then, huh. yeah, I mean, every now and then, it, things, things kind of circle back to, you know, to, to have some type of oblique reference to Roswell and stuff. It's, it's, it's truly fascinating. But, I mean, there are so many things that, there's so much information to 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 review and collate uh, in the in, in those document dumps and what had, and even though things had been redacted there were certain things that sneak through that produced just really interesting threads and there's still more documents that haven't been released yet correct now you know one of the documents that's been taken around for a while is that um, Oswald while he was in Japan um, was treated for some type of venereal disease. And we actually have a page out of Oswald's medical records where a U.S. Navy doctor certified that Oswald's contracting venereal disease was duty-related. Interesting. So his wife may not have known about it. Um, oh, well, it was, it, this, was bef this, was, this was before he met Marina. Um, she's, still, she's still alive, by the way. She is. She is. Um, so, She's living outside of Dallas, though. Um, I wonder if she'd say anything. I wonder if she'd talk about this case. Uh, well, I've, I've written to her on a couple of occasions. Her, 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 she's, she's remarried. Her last name is Porter. Um, and, and she has not returned. <laughs> she, she probably thinks I'm a stalker or something. I don't know. Let's take some calls. You ready? Sure. Let's pick it up by going to Bill in Los Angeles to get us started. Hey, Bill. Welcome. Hey, George. Uh, I was a sixth grader in uh, nearby Glendale, California in June 68 when uh, the news arrived about this uh, assassination. So I, that, that's still vivid oh, yeah. in my memory, too. And for the record, uh, I think, and a lot of other people do, too, that attempted murder is basically no different from murder except that you're either incompetent or somebody stopped you. So given that Paul concedes that Sirhan was drinking, uh, discharged eight bullets in Kennedy's direction, and the dubious track record of psychologists to predict human behavior, would Paul feel comfortable if Sirhan were paroled to live on his street near his family? Well, that's an interesting question, and that's an honest question, Paul. Uh, the answer to that question is I have no idea. Um, you know, but the, 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 the question tends to be, you know, it, it, what, is, what is his risk of recidivism? And if that's the test, and Sir Hans met it, then it makes him eligible for parole. How I feel about it, whether I want him on my street, that's an entirely different story. And perhaps if, if people are unhappy with the result of this hearing, then perhaps the board needs to, re to, to, to redetermine what their, what their test, what their criteria for parole or eligibility would be. And, 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 that, and, that, and, that, and that's the sole question. You know, is there a process? Is the process, is the, is the process fair? And if there's something about the process that doesn't make sense, well, then we change the process, but we have to go with the process as it is right now. I mean, it's funny. We run into these problems with, with elected officials and, and, and laws all the time. Well, I don't, I don't believe in that law. Well, but that's not your job. Your job is to execute the laws that are duly passed by a legislative body. And if you have conscientious scruples against the validity of that statute, then you have to work to change the statute. But you don't have the judgment to determine what you enforce and what you don't. You would think that somewhere in this California prison system, he has a dear friend who's also in prison. What do you think? Who does? Sir Han. Sir Han. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure he does. You know, one of the things that they actually, you know, uh, talked about was that, uh, you know, during the early part of the incarceration, he he he, uh, uh, he, he was very aloof. He was very, uh, he was he, he kept he kept to himself, um, and. One of the things that they cited to, that they cited to was, you know, his, his making of friendships and association with associations with other inmates and with the guards. Um, uh, as a matter of fact, three current California parole officers, uh, corrections officers, wrote letters of support um, with regard to this 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 most recent request for parole, which is you know, a pretty sexy thing to do for three you know for three current employees of the. Of, of the California prison system, so I'm sure he does have, uh, you know, some friends, um, 
you know, in the prisons. I mean, that's pretty much the only people he really has an opportunity to interact with would be prison staff and, and other inmates. So I'm sure he, I'm sure he does. But again, he's 20, you know, he was 24 years old when he committed the crime. I mean, I don't know, you know, what his makeup of of of, of friends were. Right. And it's not it's not too tough to imagine that 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 that, that, that would be possible. There've been some great books written about some crimes where the perpetrator, the the person who did it has confided to somebody in jail. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering if he said anything about this case to anybody. No, I've seen no, I've seen no evidence to the fact. I mean, you know, again, I'm always going to look up for news stories, and I recall about you know, 10 or 12 years ago, um, maybe, a little, maybe a little less, uh, one of the grounds for his appeals was that he was, that they were searching for this the woman in the polka dot dress who was supposedly the, uh, the, the trigger. Uh, you know, for the CIA mind control program or whatever. Um, so, you know, again, there are a lot of things that, that are floating around about this case that just that, that cause you to sit back and scratch your head. Wow, could he have been a Manchurian candidate? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I'm not, you know, again, I, I, I don't know enough about psychology. Believe me, I barely passed that when I was an undergrad. <laughs> um, you know, could he, could he be a Manchurian candidate? You know, absolutely. But... You know, and that was the, and that was one of the questions about Oswald, right? I mean, you know, when he defected the Soviet Union, was he part of some grand, right. some grand plot? Um, but when you think about it for a second, for, in order for for Oswald to do what he did, he would have had to have known months before that JFK was coming to Dallas and what his route was going to be, so he could get a job at the Texas School with the funds. Right? It's, it, you know, again. That kind of strange, strange credibility. I've seen, you know, we can theorize as to whether Sirhan was a, uh, you know, was a Manchurian candidate type thing, but, but I've seen no evidence, no indication, no threads, no nothing that would lead, a, that would lead, you know, make that a valid avenue of exploration. Well, nowadays with great technology, can we take that section of Oswald when he's being led out by the cops and he says, "I'm a patsy." and put that on some kind of voice stress analyzer and see if he's telling the truth or not? I'm sure we could, but a lot of that would have to determine what, you know, you'd have to have a baseline to comparison. I mean, just kind of looking at it logically. You'd have to have a baseline uh, of, of recordings of his voice. I don't know if they have that. Yeah, and, and, and again, I don't know if we have that. I, you know, I don't know if there's the recording quality. I mean, there were, I mean, this is, you know, we're not talking digital recordings. We're not talking, you know, recording to a CD or a cassette. We're, we're talking like, you know, old reel-to-reel -reel recorders uh, that people were carrying around. And I, and, I, and I don't know what the, you know, the, the, the recording quality would be like that would, that would allow us to be able to do that. And the parole procedure for Sirhan Sirhan is based on the fact that whether he's guilty or not, that's not the issue. The issue is, is he rehabilitated, I guess. Yeah. Right? He's rehabilitated. What's his recidivism risk? Is he a danger? They're going on the assumption that the guy killed Kennedy. He, he's been convicted. They have no other assumption that they can proceed forward. And exactly. The, the board was very clear. You know, we are not examining the merits of this case. That's for the that was for the court to decide. Our sole objective here is determining whether he, or not he is a suitable candidate uh, for parole. Let's go to John in Columbus, Ohio. Welcome, John. Hey, I just want to make some kind of parallel um, between uh, Sirhan Sirhan and the assassinator of Martin Luther King Jr.'s mother. And I just think that uh, these are two people who have absolutely no recollection of anything that happened uh, during uh, that moment where the assassination happened and it, it just doesn't it doesn't seem plausible like none of these people who were uh, these perpetrators of these um, assassinations or attempted assassinations during that time period seem to have any kind of affiliation with any kind of organized group that expressed animosity toward their victims or uh, even had any kind of personal, uh, you know, anything that they were saying or any kind of evidence before that that would have indicated that they would have done what they did. Well, I, I have to do say Sirhan was upset with Robert Kennedy's support of Israel. Um, he was uh, an oppressed Palestinian, 
And as I've always said, back in 1948, they should have carved out a place for the Palestinians. And everybody I talked to agrees with that. That was a big mistake that this world made when they rightfully carved out Israel. But, uh, but Sirhan had a beef with Kennedy and his support of Israel. Did he not, Paul? He did. And, you know, it was amazing because, what, because while well, he was, you know, offering his testimony at the hearing, he got very emotional and, and, and literally started crying. Um, not because, and, and it wasn't, you know, a, a result of political rage. He was talking about children being, be, you know, being, being bombed and killed in their own homes and how nobody should have to go through that. And, and, and I thought that was kind of a rare glimpse into, you know, what might have motivated Sirhan, you know, a, a sense of empathy rather than, uh, you know, pure rage. Just kind of touching on something very briefly, early in his incarceration, he had several, he had been written up for, for several outbursts, um, you know, um, against other inmates and, 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 and guards. And, and those things had, had, had tapered on. But one of the determinations that they made was that he did have anger management problems. Uh, and that he had, been, he had been enrolled in anger management programs. Uh -huh pretty much throughout his incarceration, and I think he might have recognized that was a problem with him. But at some point, you know, in his thought process, it, it, there, there was a transition from political rage to this, this, this glimpse of empathy, and, and, I, and I don't think it was staged. Uh, he just started talking about it and then spontaneously started to cry, and I found him, you know, eminently believable as well. Deborah's in Georgia. Welcome to the show. Hi, Deborah. Hey, George. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. You're welcome. I have two You're welcome. questions You're welcome. Um, about Sahan and one comment about Oswald. And actually, you have addressed nicely um, one of my questions. It was about uh, him being under mind control. Mm -hmm. Over the years, we all hear these things, but over and over, I have heard that Hoover has selected him as a patsy, and he was under mind control to do the, to do the deed. And then I have always heard that when they examined the gun, there were blanks in his gun. Okay, those are my two questions I want to ask you. And the third is, I want to comment on that, all of, on Oswald being shot, because I had heard that Oswald was definitely in the CIA. He was in Louisiana, where they, I don't know if you still have it, but where they had uh, a CIA um, um, military camp where they went to, uh, you know, it was very secret, it was very, to work out and, he, he was accidentally shot, but in Louisiana in this uh, camp. So there's that, Paul. And All right, well, that's the, possible that Oswald was some kind of CIA agent. That's sure. What do you think of the blanks in the gun, Paul? I've never heard that. Uh, that I haven't heard either. Um, when, they, when, when they found the rifle, um, there, was, there, there, there was a round in the chamber. So um, she's talking about blanks in the Sirhan's gun. Oh, Blanks and Sirhan's gun? I mean, I don't know how you would determine that. Uh, because, I mean, he had, he had expended all, I mean, it's an interesting theory, because theoretically if he had Blanks in there, he would have, you know, all of the rounds would have been expended, and there are shots that are unaccounted for. Uh, I mean, that's, I mean, that's, that, I, it sounds possible, it sounds interesting. I, have, I, haven't, I haven't seen that or read anything about it. Uh, but, um, there does seem to be an, an, an abnormally large number of shots that found human targets based on the condition on which he was firing. That's right. And how about Hoover? Was he that diabolical? Would he have done stuff like that? Uh, I think he was. I think he was capable. I think he was capable of blackmail. I think he was capable of of of, of you know unbridled exercises of power. Absolutely. He had he had he had things on John Kennedy that are defy logic. Yeah, but I'm not so sure. But I'm not so sure that that would make him a willing participant. There has to be something more. And I think that, well, at least my working theory is that um, Hoover was directing the the investigation, kind of like he directed everything else. Uh, as a, and, and and there were steps taken as a safeguard to keep it to, to keep it from leading back to certain places. And it was you got to remember the time, okay? You know, there's, there's this perception that JFK was soft on, on, on communism. And this is, I mean, the Cold War is raging. I mean, the, you know, the world is divided between us and them. 
And these guys view themselves really as true believers. Well, he was tough with the Soviets during the Cuban Missile Crisis, to be sure. Let's come back, Paul, and take final calls in a moment on Coast to Coast AM. Coast Insiders, the new version of the Coast to Coast AM app is now available for iPhone and now Android 4.0 and above. Listen live or on demand anywhere, anytime. Go to coasttocoastam.com and download it today. crash and vaccine milestones. I'm Johnny Diagostini from the KFI 24-hour newsroom. One crew member aboard a Navy helicopter that crashed into the Pacific off San Diego has been rescued. The Navy confirmed late Tuesday night that search efforts continue for the rest of the crew. The chopper attached to the USS Abraham Lincoln went down about 60 miles off the shore while conducting routine flight operations. Governor Newsom is announcing a major milestone in coronavirus vaccinations. 80% of all eligible Californians, 12 and older, have received at least one dose. Newsom adds weekly vaccination numbers are skyrocketing. The state of California uh, now over the last two weeks has seen uh, an average over 600,000 doses of vaccine administered. He says efforts to provide more mobile vaccination sites will continue, as well as reaching minorities and rural residents. Los Angeles Dodgers pitcher Trevor Bauer could be facing a long-term absence from the sport. The SPN reports Bauer could be facing discipline from the MLB, regardless if he's charged with a crime by the L.A. County District Attorney's Office. Bauer is facing allegations that he sexually assaulted a California woman and was under a three-month investigation by the Pasadena Police Department. Under the league's joint domestic violence, sexual assault, and child abuse policy, Bauer could be facing a suspension of at least one to two years. Bauer was placed on administrative leave on July 2nd and could remain away from the Dodgers for the remainder of the season. Gene Simmons is the latest member of KISS to test positive for COVID-19, joining bandmate Paul Stanley. The band is postponing its next four tour dates, expected to return to the road late next week in Southern California. Southland weather from KFI, some clouds today, low 70s at the beaches, mid to high 70s in Metro LA, mid 80s in the valley, and also mid 80s in the Inland Empire. It's 67 degrees in Anaheim, 81 in Palm Springs, 63 degrees in Simi Valley. Wheelie Local from the KFI 24-hour newsroom, I'm Johnny Diagostini. In Pomona, there is a work zone. It's on the 10 westbound from the 57 to Holt. Caltrain is going to be taken away the right lane until 5. Watch for delays in that area. And in Mid-City, this is on the 10 eastbound at Normandy. Little fender bender there. That's out of blades and on the right shoulder, but watch for wiggy little delays as you approach Riverside. This is on the 215 northbound from Central to University. Carpool and left lane are going to be shut down for road work. You're seeing delays in that stretch. KFI on the sky helps get you there faster. I'm Brian Van. Did you miss the Trump rally last weekend? Every major cable news channel refused to carry it except for Newsmax. Over 5 million Americans tuned into Newsmax to watch the rally. Newsmax is now the fastest growing cable news channel in America. The place for real news you can trust. Newsmax is on all the major cable systems. If your system doesn't carry it, call them. Tell them you want it. Newsmax also streams free on smart TVs like Samsung, LG, and on apps like Roku, Amazon Fire, Zumo, Pluto, and more. Seven million people have the Newsmax app on their smartphone. You'll love the Newsmax app. It takes seconds to download it on your phone, and there's no paywall or subscription. So here's what you do. You watch Newsmax for breaking news. And find out why tens of millions of Americans are tuning into Newsmax TV. And going to Newsmax.com for breaking news. Watch Newsmax TV today. Owning a business comes with pressure. There's a limit to what I can do and still keep employees engaged. Fortunately, there's Insperity. They put 30 plus years of HR experience to work to help me with hiring, training, HR administration, and compliance, while giving my employees competitive benefit options. And because I'm able to focus on other priorities, my employees can thrive and my business can grow. With Insperity, nothing seems impossible. Insperity, HR that makes a difference. 
Hey, it's Dean Sheriff. I am so proud that since Duffy Power came to KFI, lots of homes like yours now have emergency backup power. It's an incredibly smart and affordable thing to do. Okay, but the pandemic has everything in short supply. So right now, my best generator advice is don't wait. Call Duffy today so they can make sure your life won't be interrupted during the next outage. Dial pound 250 on your cell and say Duffy Power. Pound 250, Duffy Power, or find them on the web at DuffyPower.com. KFI, AM640, more stimulating talk. <laughs> To talk to George Nori, call the wild card line at 818-501-4109. The first time caller line is 818-501-4721. To talk toll free from east of the Rockies, call 800-825-5033. From west of the Rockies, toll free, call 800-618-8255. To reach George via Skype, use Skype name George97313. Send George a text message anytime at 818-298-6521. From the Gateway to the West, this is Coast to Coast AM with George Norrie. Next hour, Justin Vanforth joins us as we take a little walk on the paranormal side. His book is called The Spectrum, Glimpses of the Paranormal and Encounters with the Strange. So we'll get ready for that. Have you signed up yet to become a Coast Insider? It's only 15 cents a day. Hi, this is Jerry from Paraland, Texas. Loyal listener since 1996. I love being a Coast to Coast Insider because I can download shows to my phone and listen anywhere in Texas, from our Gulf Coast beaches to the mountains of Big Bend. Hi, I'm Pam from Denver. I've been a Coast to Coast Insider for many, many years and love it. I get to listen whenever I want and get to tap into Art Bell's show vault. You too can get these goodies. Become a Coast to Coast Insider today. This is Jack. I'm a Coast Insider and I love the show. I can replay the show from the night before or anytime with the show archive. All of the guests are very informative and super entertaining. Sign up and become a Coast Insider today. You'll be glad you did. When you go to our coasttocoastam.com website, right at the top it says Coast Insider. Fill out the information, become a member, get it as a gift, keep it for yourself. If you're under a lot of stress, this will help. If you feel stressed, suffer from fatigue, moodier than usual, or would like to fall asleep easier and sleep more soundly while losing weight, do we have something for you. Accelerate and Elevate. I take Elevate Performance Supplement in the morning for energy and laser focus for work. Then before bed, I take Accelerate Weight Management and Sleep Combo. And indeed, I now sleep soundly through the night. Plus, I'm losing weight. It's amazing. I've maybe gotten four to five hours of sleep max a night. I'm sleeping between six and seven. I wake up to use the bathroom, but I go right back to sleep, which has never happened before, which is pretty awesome. I noticed a high level of happiness. I also noticed that I wasn't taking naps. I had more energy. I was more in the moment with my kids. Like We were laughing more. We were more excited. Every single person needs to feel this. I lost 10 pounds and five and a half inches off my waist, and I'm so proud of myself. It gives you energy. It helps you sleep better. It just works. I stand by it 100%. I was on a handful of medications to help me sleep, to help me be happy, tons of therapy. When I'm ready to go to sleep, I'm getting seven to nine hours of sleep every night. I've lost some pounds, um, inches mainly. My family has me back. Try Accelerate and Elevate, discounted for listeners to the show. Plus, further discounts with the Georgia's Power Pack, including a free gift. Learn more and order now at HealthyLooking.com. That's HealthyLooking.com or 800-394-9930. So jump on the path now to all-day energy, better focus, better sleep, and weight loss with Accelerate and Elevate at HealthyLooking.com. That's HealthyLooking.com or 800-394-9930. Real people, real stories. I had acute eczema. I had been to minimum of three different...
different dermatologists. I have tried every cream and ointment that you can imagine. It was pretty miserable. So I started taking a carnivore, and at this point, I don't want to ever be without it. I don't want to go back there again. Our little dog developed this lymph problem, but the chemotherapy lasted for six months. He started developing more uh, lymph nodes that were swelled up. So I thought I'd just try carnivore. The lymph nodes started to go down, swelling dead. Then I took him into the vet to have him checked out, and there was no signs at all inside. My cat had issues that developed in his eye, so my veterinarian said, you know what, just go ahead and remove the eye. So that night, I heard the carnivore on advertising, so I said, you know what, I'm going to order this product. That way, at least I tried. They did the procedure, they did all the tests, to their surprise, and they said, I don't know what you did, this product saved his eye. George Nori here. I'm pleased to announce that Carnivora has officially launched its pet division. That's right. Both you and your pets can benefit from nature's nutritional powerhouse. Try Carnivora and you'll see for yourself. Call 1-866-836-8735. That's 1-866-836-8735. Or visit Carnivora.com. C-A-R-N-I-V-O-R-A.com. Don't wait. Call today. Carnivora.com. Carnivora.com Sometimes the world can seem a cold place, so we gotta bring the warmth to it. Sometimes the world can seem a broken place, so we gotta strive to fix it. At the end of the day, we are empowered to create the world we want to live in. So we prepare for the worst, but we must always, always expect the best. Smith & Wesson, empowering Americans. And welcome back to Coast to Coast. George Norrie with you, Paul DeBoli with us. Paul, is it politically smart, in your opinion, for a standing governor to go through this parole process and parole Sirhan when it gets to him? That's a really tough question. I mean, but, uh, um, but uh, you know, I mean, Governor Newsom, you know, does kind of make some, some uh, you know, decisions that we didn't see coming sometimes. Um, and, again, I think it's going to depend on, on what the merits are and how the case is presented to him. And, of course, you know, the political realization is that, you know, you're going to have a majority of the members of a very powerful political family, you know, that's something to, exercise, you know, at least make their opinion known as to what should happen. So... Again, I, I, I don't know what Governor Newsom's going to do. I don't know if Governor Newsom's still going to be governor. No, that's a, that's a good point. If you were the governor, and this was on your desk, would you like to meet Sir Han Sir Han and talk to him personally? Yes. Yeah, I would do that. Too. Whether that's allowable in California law, I don't know. Um, um, you know, I, I think the governor's review is solely, you know, administrative, you know, kind of a, a, a an administrative type thing. But I mean, if, if the governor wanted to meet and talk with him, I, I, I certainly think that that would be appropriate. Back to the calls we go. Let's go to Rich in San Francisco. Welcome to the show. Hey, Rich. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate your time. Uh, thank you. I've got to ask, how can you uh, square the fact that there were, I believe, three bullets in the back of the head and the the the, 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 the electric shell is standing nearly 10 feet in front of them? That's not... What do we know about that? Well, we know we know that um, you know the, the 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 big piece of evidence is that the bullet, you know, and and and, and Bobby Kennedy's skull, the fatal headshot, was never recovered. Um, and again, it would have been nice if we had had you know some type of camera, you know, in the. You know, in, in the kitchen pantry. Yeah, if we had cell phones in those days, we would have had them. You know, but, we're, but we're, 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 we're going by people's testimony, um, you know, very, very limited number of photographs, and we just don't know, but there are certain things that are, that are, that a number of the witnesses do say.